show up for Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. Here. Squire Travis. Here. Squire Cop. Here. 
No, I don't even need to say the clerk remark. Okay. It just needs to say number one election camera quotes. And then delete everything after that. Delete all everything, all sure. those pages and pages and pages, all the way to page twenty. And the last uh, you see the bullet point where it says motion by Judge Travis to lay the item on the table, that needs to stay. And then that, that'll have our minutes where they need to be, in my opinion. Well that's what we just voted to do. So Alrighty. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, communications from Judge. I will uh, go through these pretty quick. Uh, I've been having discussions with the uh, health department about uh, uh, trying to get another 12-hour uh, ambulance uh, shift, about uh, seeing if there's opportunities for funding. I had a meeting the other day in my office with them, and uh, uh, we, we can talk about that a little later. but. Y'all remember Chris brought before us uh, 324000 or so is what the, the manpower would cost to run a 12-hour shift. So uh, anyway, uh, to, to keep things brief and moving tonight, I won't get into that any deeper. We can discuss it at the next meeting. But, but I would like for the health department to make a contribution to the fiscal court to help the safety and welfare and, uh, you know, the, to represent the people of the community. Uh, by helping us with the EMS, and I'm going to reach out to them, and, and I've learned how to go through the channels for that. So I'll be doing that in the future. Uh, the main consistent uh, job that we posted, we have uh, several that are interested. Uh, Kentucky State Fair Tourism booth. Uh, uh, Y'all down at the fair, uh, Lisa Anna, uh, who uh, who we hired earlier in the year to work with us for economic development tourism. Uh, they worked down there and set up a great big uh, display at the Spencer County booth. I'd like you to check it out. I'd like the community to, to check it out. It's really impressive. Uh, private roads program, uh, just to keep things running. Uh, I'll, I'll just skip that till, till another meeting. If you all have any questions about it, well, come see me. We'll talk about it. Uh, Co-op opportunity is in your book in page, on page 43. Uh, basically, uh, the lady here has her business card, and uh, Todd has been in contact with them. You know, they're looking for places for, for the, the older, uh, I guess, seniors to do some co-op type work, and they, they would like to, uh, you know, they're interested in working with us. So I thought it was worth reaching out, reaching out to. So I just want to share that with you. One more thing, it's not on here. Is uh, OSHA uh, came, like I mentioned. Uh, they came friendly and, and found several things that we have to respond to them. Uh, two were due today and we got them responded and turned in. Uh, there is one particular issue. Lynn and I had a good conversation about it in her office where the copy machine is sitting in front of the uh, circuit panel. It can't do that. We got to move the circuit panel or move the copy machine. You have to have quick access to a circuit panel. So, uh, but we are allowed to ask for an extension to continue to work on it. Uh, Lynn and I couldn't come up, we came up with a, a, a good resolution as long as it'll work. So we've got to check it out. We have to talk to an electrician about it. But anyway, uh, those, there's no place to put the copier without a chainsaw and a sledgehammer in, in the deed room. I mean, I invite all of y'all to go in there and get in, try to come up with a better option. Uh, you, you can meet with Lynn and she would show you what we spoke about. When you walk in the doorway of the deed room, there's a, there's a little place on the wall that you could potentially put a panel. And you could run, you know, you, you could run the wires in conduit. They're already ran in conduit down to the panel anyhow. But uh, we've got to do one of two things. And it's a copy machine where when people go in and research deeds, it's right there handy. I mean, it, don't, it doesn't need to be hidden somewhere. Because a lot of people come in and open up books and start copying and they need the copies right there handy. It would be quite inconvenient if we didn't move the copy machine from where it is. But uh, that's going to be pretty expensive to relocate the circuit panel too. Please go give us a better option. Uh, I'm all ears. But we've got an additional four weeks. Have the hallway for a big $4,000 good circuit right well, you know, the, as, as our, uh, our, uh, our folks go in and do research, the copy machine I know gets used a bunch. Uh, Y'all probably made copies on it before. The community's always in there making copies. Uh, you know, banks, realtors, everybody's in there. 
But anyway, that's one thing we got fixed. Didn't get fixed, but I got an extension to get it fixed. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's all I have on that. Uh, I moved the uh, communications from citizens. I knew tonight would be potentially a longer meeting, mm -hmm. so I moved it up to the beginning so I could invite anyone in the audience. If you would like to address the court, the uh, microphone's right here. Just come up and uh, address the court, state your name. Uh, Roy, I know you filled this out, uh, maybe to speak. Do you welcome to speak? It's, it's, if you're, if you're good. <laughs> First, I want to thank the court for the sign that not only got out to Perez, but at Blue Mouth. There's a lot of history there, and we try to preserve it. We don't try to change it. Oh, uh, hey, dude. Move it up. We'll make sure we get you, Roy. Right? Okay. Yeah, we're the last speaker anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know we uh, asked the court to help us, and. Uh, I really want to thank for what you did. There's still work to do up there. And, uh, as I look, and uh, Ms. Cooper uh, came up with uh, the Buffalo Soldier that's up there, and there's a lot of information. And we'll record all that and give it to the Historic Society so when all of us is gone, there'll be history and show that not only did they make contributions to Spencer County, but to the United States. So I still ask the court to consider helping because there's still a lot of work in a lot of these uh, rural cemeteries. And uh, there's one out there in Dead Man's Curve. It's just, it's probably a five year project and we're, that's been a three year project. And, it's, and uh, we, we thank you, God bless you. And we continue to want your help, thank you. Hey Roy, uh, everybody that's, that was a razor don't know where Dead Man's Curve is. <laughs> I know it. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell, tell us where it is. I know where it is. It's out uh, there. That's out there in Elk Creek. Yeah, Old Elk Creek. Yeah, uh, Old Elk Creek Road. Uh, and, uh, you wouldn't know it was a cemetery or it looked like a forest. And uh, it's going to take another. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated and we just thank you for your support because this is history. We don't change it, we preserve it. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Roy. What's the name of that cemetery? Out there in Denver. Uh, I know it's connected to uh, Carruthers and the uh, church out there in Elk Creek. Well, we just need to get in there because they said there's headstones in there. We just need to get in there and dig around and see what's in there. And then we'll, we'll let you know. And, yeah. um, all right, thank you, Roy. Uh -huh. uh, anyone else like to, to address us under citizens' comments? Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. My name's Michael Morgan. Um, I don't know exactly what's on the agenda tonight as far as you guys are going to be some talk about uh, curbing on county roads and stuff like that. Um, I decided to do a little research myself just to see the pros and the cons of it. One of the first things that popped up was the EPA is recommended against it on low density development. Um, there's a small three page report and a 40 something page report I found from the EPA recommended against it on subdivisions of a quarter acre or less. So on a one acre lot, one house per acre uh, wouldn't be required if something four houses or more would be required. So um, just with that, another concern I thought might be important for you guys to consider um, is when we go to fix these roads in the county, as far as maintenance on them, um, the roads are probably going to have to be soft cut um, to delete that and not mess with that curve and not damage that. And then also the maintenance that's going to be required on any of the gutters that would be installed um, down the road if there's street sweepers in the county, in the town, it's a different story. You know, the town can probably pay for a street sweeper to go through there, you know, once every so often. But on a county road, I just think the maintenance could be considered on on the All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, that issue is up on the agenda a little later. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else like to address us? All right, thank you. We'll move on from there. Uh, we have uh, Julie. Uh, you're not first this time, so hang on. <laughs> so uh, 
we have uh, several folks back here from the District 5 Road Department. Uh, I'll just turn it over to all of you guys, and if you would, introduce everyone to all of us. I can certainly do that. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Tom Hall. I'm the Planning Section Supervisor uh, with the District 5 Office in Louisville, and uh, here's the group that's with us. Uh, this is Scott Tipton. He's the branch manager uh, for, our, uh, for our maintenance and construction for our rural county. Uh, this is David Tipton. He's the section engineer here for uh, Spencer County. And then uh, back by, behind him is uh, Larry Chain. He works for Van Planning and uh, puts our RS program together. And then we have our chief district engineer, Matt Bull. Um, and uh, the purpose of our visit is to uh, uh, coordinate on our rural secondary uh, resurfacing program. Uh, rural secondary roads are uh, farm to market roads, they're not our larger roads, they're the smaller roads, farm to market roads, and uh, 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 we are required to uh, communicate and, and get co uh, a concurrence from the local government uh, on to make sure that we're picking the right roads to do resurfacing work on every year when we do this program. And, uh, Basically, when, when we're seeking concurrence, we uh, we tell you about what roads we are resurfacing, and uh, if you guys agree, uh, it's our hope that you'll give us either a uh, resolution or at least uh, get it logged in the minutes that you would agree with our program. Uh, and so, to begin, I usually try to tell uh, the folks in the county uh, what we did last year in the program and how successful we, we were at that. And so, um, I'll just do that real quick. Uh, and it's, we, we worked on four things last year. Uh, the first thing was a slide repair on Kentucky 2885, that's West River Road, uh, and that work is complete. Uh, we did a uh, pipelining project on Plum Ridge Road, that's Kentucky 1169, and that project is also done. Uh, we did uh, resurfacing work, 4.226 miles of resurfacing work on Hardesty Ridge Road, Kentucky 1251. And then we did uh, additional resurfacing work, another 1.2 miles on uh, Wilsonville Road, Kentucky 3192. So that was last year's program. So that's what we set out to do, and that's what we were successful in doing. Uh, this year, uh, I would, uh, I, I don't know if everybody has a copy of our long sheet, but I'll try to walk you through this. It's a rather cryptic sheet, but uh, I'll try to talk through it like in normal words, and we'll see how far we go. Uh, but we start out at the beginning, we had a prior year balance up in the top left corner of $53,154. Uh, we get an allotment for each county every year uh, just to, to work the program, and we add that with the prior year balance. And we end up with a, a total funds balance of $971,625. And so there's a few things we uh, take off the top before we uh, get to having funds to do resurfacing work on roadways, and I'll walk through those real quick. Uh, the first thing is rural secondary routine maintenance and traffic, and that's basically uh, our guys, uh, our state workers, pays them to get out there and do uh, pothole patching, shoulder work, uh, snow and ice removal, those type of things. And, and this is, uh, uh, that type of work is done on 74.379 uh, miles of rural secondary roads in Spencer County. And the cost is uh, $459,200. So we take that off the top of uh, uh, the $971,625, and that leaves us with a uh, balance to carry forward of uh, $512,425. And the next item that we can take off is uh, what's called Flex Funds for County Directed Projects. And um, that's a program that started about 10 years ago, and uh, some of this rural secondary money can be peeled off and uh, counties can use it if they choose uh, on uh, local road projects. So that's a nice uh, opportunity for ca uh, the county. Uh, and at the beginning of the process, at the beginning of the year, we asked the county, uh, do you want to um, use this money on your roads? And if not, then we just use it in our program. We want to use it. Yes, yes, that was our understanding. Yeah, when yes. is that, uh, uh, we've talked about this a lot, but is there kind of a release date that's set for flex funds? Uh, like I, my intentions, I thought like it was coming in April and June, and, and still ain't like here. How's that process actually getting released? The program's a little late this year. The whole program's probably four or five months late. Uh, and the person to talk to about 
when you can get your flex funds, how to get a flex funds will be Craig Caudill up in our office of local program. Okay. And uh, but everything this year is a few months late. But we usually come and do this meeting uh, in April or May, and here we are and it's August. So everything's a little bit late. It's should still be available. A little later in our meeting, we're the I think the only thing we're shy is the that resolution the, that we have to we have to vote on tonight and get sent in to Kelly Johnson. Yeah. I believe yeah. so we'll be in good shape on the flex funds. And as soon as we get that part done on the flex funds, then we're gonna send our discretionary list right. in. All right. Sounds like a blame. Uh okay, so um Getting back to where we were, uh, if we uh, 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 take those uh, $137,771 flex project off, that leaves us with $374,654. The next item on the list is this county judge executive expense. And uh, 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 for new judges starting this year, uh, they don't offer that anymore. It was a $3,600 payment to the county because the county helps coordinate the program. Uh, but the legislature has seen fit to not s support that going forward for new judges. So that leaves us with our balance of uh, $374,654, and that's the amount of money that we actually are trying to do resurfacing work. So the first uh, uh, project uh, is, is actually not a resurfacing project, it's a slip or a slab repair uh, that we would. Uh, that we would do on uh, Kentucky 1795 Mill Road at mile point 1.5. And uh, the estimated cost to do that work would be $131,343. And so if we take that off, that leaves $243,311. Uh, and then we would do a resurfacing road, same road, uh, Kentucky 1795 Mill Road from Kentucky 44 uh, to mile point 310. Uh, and so, uh, and that our, the cost estimate for that was two hundred thirty-three thousand two hundred ninety-eight dollars, and that kind of leaves us a little carryover balance of ten thousand thirteen dollars. Uh, and that would, so basically, a, a slip repair and a resurfacing project on uh, Kentucky seventeen ninety-five is our proposal for this year. Let's make a resolution right now. This was done two years ago. I'll take that as a motion to approve the, the presented the three product resolution. Well, with a motion to approve his presentation and uh, to complete his product. I'll make that motion. All right. I have a motion by Will, second by Zach, uh, to approve the uh, presented uh, projects that uh, Mr. Hall presented to us tonight on our state roads. Any discussion? Does that take care of what you guys need? It'll be in the minutes. All right. So yeah, and you are going to do it in the minutes or a resolution? It'll be in the minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Then. All right. We will have it in the minutes uh, as long as it passes. I think we will. Go ahead. Then. No, we, uh, we're going to go on this. I, I have a question for you. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on the on the motion to approve the district fire's presentation to us uh, to do these repairs? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just a comment. Uh, the fifth district, like you guys, don't communicate with the counties very well. But when there's changes made that was, you know, proposed earlier, like uh, the two plus one, uh, 155 project, uh, I thought that was a go two years ago. And Matt, you met with us, we didn't, and then I found out after talking, you know, or communicating with you this week that they kind of threw that out and started over again with the whole new proposal of a five lane uh, for the Jefferson County, and the District of County, whatever. Can you guys communicate with us a little bit more when there's changes uh, in your projects and let us know ahead of time so we won't find out? six months eight months down the road yeah yeah and i think what you're suggesting is that we like beef up our uh, public involvement and our local officials involved well just communicate from you guys to the county judge so we'll know Fair enough. I, we won't be uh, surprised i'll I, I like I'll, I'll make in their defense we actually met last friday 
uh, down at the District 5 office on Westport Road. First time I've ever been there. Uh, we met with uh, Representative Tipton and uh, Senator Higgins and also Senator uh, Hawks, I believe, from Jefferson County. Uh, and then there was another fellow that was mad. But, uh, but anyway, we looked at all these proposals and, and that you just mentioned, like on 155. And of course, the reason that we needed uh, our, our state elected folks there was they're going to try to get us some money. And we got to see what's doable. And before last Friday, I didn't have anything really to add a report, Jim, but, but I will report now that, uh, well, I still don't guess I have a lot of things to report in that, but, but we did discuss them at length. And uh, Senator Higgins and James Allen are going to uh, work about trying to get more funding. They have lists of funding. I'll give you, here's an example of, of how uh, out at Bullet East, you guys probably go by Bullet East, Mount Washington, they just did those lane repairs. James Allen said that started in like 2018, and we just blacktopped them. So things take, I mean, slower than molasses. Uh, but but then they can move things up in safety issues like all the work they did around Elk Creek back in the spring fixing the turning lanes and things. And I mean, we actually got a brand new surface all the way to Jefferson County Line. Wonderful. Thank you all for that. Uh, and, and I really, I don't know you guys' opinion, we haven't really discussed it, but having those additional turning lanes there at the four-way uh, will save lives uh, just by doing that. And, and another thing I learned, Jim, that uh, they, uh, you know, that there, there are safety issues. There are ways to possibly add, uh, add turning lanes because of safety issues. I know Senator Higgins was asking questions about those things, but uh, but they they have we have been in communication. The the best meeting that we've had was the one we had last Friday, so I haven't been able to report that one yet. But in their in their defense. Uh, we're, we're communicating, and I will make sure when I learn something to get it to you guys. I just have one one last question. Then, once this gets approved, what kind of timeline is on this to get started on, say, this project or you know any project we do in the future? Like as far as this Mill Road project. The, well, the typical the way it works is we typically in the fall we'll put it out for advertisement. And uh, we give the and we'll hire a contractor sometime late fall, Christmas time ish, and we give them until June thirtieth of the next summer to complete the project. Uh, and generally speaking, all of the work that we had done uh, in our RS program last year was complete by uh, June thirtieth. Thank you much. Well, the, the you said it's like four hundred some thousand dollars for maintenance and repairs. Is that the, just like the trimming the trees on the side of the road is that included in there? Could y'all send word back that you need to beef up the quality control on that? Because I think there ain't a state road in this county other than 55 and 44. They could trim it one day. I drive down the next and it's taking out the windshield. My belt truck, my mirror's coming off, my antenna's coming off. They think if they cut that thing right to the edge of the road, take it eight foot tall. That don't work. You got to take it on up. So if you could send that back, I'd appreciate it. I don't get to see him all the time, so I got to see what I see. All right, all right. All right. Any, anything else? All right, thank you guys. Uh, you work on the state at midnight or later or earlier or, or, or go enjoy a nice meal in town. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for coming. All right, we're not going to get to Okay. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second uh, to pass the, uh, the presentation that we just were presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Julie. Are you sure? Yeah. Now we got reapportionment, but it's going to take place as soon as we get done with our reports. All right, so I have a proposed ordinance and two zoning changes. So where do we want to start? Uh, first page in our books. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> first reading. Uh, okay. Water Road. Okay. Start from the book. Yeah. All right. 
So I have an application of Everett Lane and Madeline R. Emmel requesting Ag1 Agricultural to Ag2 Agricultural on 6.977 acres located in the 1900 block of Plum Creek Road, which is Highway 1060. Commissioner Mudd made a motion to recommend a rezone the application of Everett Lane and Madeline R. Emmel requesting zone change from Ag1 Agricultural to Ag2 Agricultural on 6.977 acres located in the 1900 block of Plum Creek Road, which is Highway 1060. There's no one there to speak against it. It did bring them into compliance. Commissioner Brown second that motion. Motion carried. So that is the first reading. Uh, I've got a question on it. Okay. What were they out of compliance with? The zoning. It got transferred without ever having the zoning change. So because it's less than 10 acres, it should have been changed. Okay. Next, we have the application of Nicole Roof Development, LLC, requesting R1 Residential to R2 Residential on 2.00 acres located in the 400 block of Wills Way. Commissioner Hunt made a motion to recommend to rezone the application of Nicole Roof Development, LLC, requesting zone change from R1 Residential to R2 Residential on 2.00 acres located in the 400 block of Wills Way. The recommended land use map from comprehensive plan recommends low density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Um, it would bring the two acres into the same zoning as the additional 20.95 acres. Testimony is taken from a couple of people. Um, that motion was second by Commissioner Mudd. After a roll call vote, motion carried. Just a little explanation there. The reason it mentions the 20.95 acres is they are going to convey this two acre tract in with 20.95. Um, and then upon rezoning, they are going to develop and, and divide that out. That will be a, another phase of type of site. Where did the two, two acres come from? It was originally a four acres uh, little slip in there, and they put two acres in with a tract that was zoned agricultural to a Mr. Whitehead recently that left these two acres sitting alone. So we you know, they're asking for it to be compatible with the, the neighboring tract of R2. That's what they're doing now. Okay. So next, get on the right one here. And I think you the right one because I printed the same one twice. Did you all end up with the poultry ordinance? Please tell me you did. We did. Yep. Okay. Page 56. In our so that is my, my failure there. I printed the curb and the street one twice. Did you see it? Sure, if you don't want it to. There you go. Yeah, that's what I've done. I printed the center twice. Anyone? Do you know? Are you sure of that place? It doesn't matter. One's wrong. I trust you all to read. Man. No, that's where I want. See, Jim, the same thing I did. Which one do you need, the chicken or the, the curve? I need the chicken or the egg. All right, here, here's the chicken. Chicken, got to it. Oh, yeah, here's the chicken. I was like, did I send y'all two of them? There you go. Okay, my bad, I'm so sorry. 57. Yeah. You have two at one time. 56 and 7. Okay, so this is proposed ordinance number two, and this will be first reading. Um, for fiscal year 2023-2024, the um, Planning Commission um, acted on your all's recommendation. What they have sent back to you, though, this is um, Article 500 R1 Single Family Residential. So you all have recommended to them to do 12 poultry or fowl animals per acre and that they were to be confined to the property. So the Planning Commission agree with that, but they have also added in um, where it talks about the properties because kept in such a manner as to uh, create an offensive odor and or nuisance to neighboring dwellings. So um, that yes. is their only addition in verbiage of what you all sent them. So they were agreeing with the 12. Um, as you'll see in the minutes that I sent you, they did do a little discussion. Um, the ideal of a rooster was brought up they didn't touch that that is the, about the only thing that has been mentioned to me after the fact is people are still concerned about the fact of a, you know a rooster or you know we've heard they brought up about meat chickens too yeah 
The only concern I, I see with this is poultry. 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 Poultry covers that. Poultry is root, your skin, meat, chicken, it's all the same. Poultry. Is the word it says offensive odor, which I'm good with, and it says and or nuisance. Uh, it says nuisance. There's no definition for nuisance. So how do you define nuisance? Is this the nuisance just going to be if you know they don't like you, they come up and say it's a nuisance, and they're going to get a letter. So I think if you're going to put nuisance in there, you better define what nuisance is. That word was on uh, recommendation by the zoning attorney. Dudley Dells, who recommended that they put that in there, be and or nuisance. Well, I don't feel comfortable um, with it if the plan is on the plan going to define what nuisance is. But I, I mean, I agree. We need to know what's considered a nuisance, there, but, uh, or we'll be right back. They have to be contained. Well, I'm going to say it so, could be a nightmare for court. Well, well it's that zoning lawyer, he said this would make it easier for enforcement. How was that? Good question. Yeah. Well, I could argue it could be. I can argue the same way that it could be harder because, you know, if you're trying to, they're like, what's the nuisance? And you're like, well, okay, well, okay. So, so, some of the speakers at that meeting, I, I was there also, they had a crowd like we had, guys. Maybe it's been here more. But uh, anyhow, the, you know, one, one person said you could have 12 peacocks. You could have 12 big old turkeys. Uh, so that's when the attorney mentioned, you know, as long as they're not creating a nuisance, I mean, I, I kind of see it like if you've got a barking dog, that's a nuisance. And, and if I recall, the wheel might back me up. Um, they, they wanted to leave it loose enough to where the enforcement could make the determination on the nuisance to where they could choose to send the letter or not. So uh, what's so what's the enforcement's definition of nuisance? Right, seeing that, that's, that's what it's going to come to. Because then it's going to get to where... One person will say it's a nuisance, another person will say it's not. Well, you could get into a thing where you could say, where somebody make an argument, <coughs> well, you, now you're playing favorites, because you enforced this complaint, but you didn't enforce that one, and you're going to say, look, I have nothing to stand on, what's a nuisance, what ain't. So I think it needs to be in there and be defined, or it needs to be... Uh, <coughs> and that you can say that about noise ordinances or anything. You know, you can say... Use, well, I mean, yeah. Exactly. I'm just using too loud. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can say the same thing about older, like what is defined as a bad older, but nuisance is why open. I mean, yeah. somebody just say, look at it as a nuisance, you know. I think we leave it loose and let Julie do her job. And then, I'm just saying it's going to be hard enough. If they want to argue in the court, then they argue whether it's a nuisance. I'm just trying not to make it hard for Julie to relate out exactly what a nuisance is and she can go down and say, okay, what well, qualifies as a nuisance or not, so we're either going to force it I don't think you can qualify what's a nuisance or not. Then take it out. Yeah, what's a nuisance to well, I just think it's irrelevant or it's unnecessary garbage. It just leaves it wide open for people just to complain because they don't like their neighbor. So I would like to send it back and remove the word nuisance. I'm okay with odor. You don't have to send it back. You get the final say. Oh, okay. It's right here. But I, I was thinking that it was on the thing on though is a rooster crowing a nuisance. That's been a question. Hey, that's, that's country literature. Or, you know, like, you, have, you want 12 roosters beside of you? That's what I was questioning. <laughs> of course, it depends, it depends on the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, your neighbors may be tickled to death with roosters, the roosters mm -hmm. crawling. Yeah. And then some neighbors may not be. And I mean, you know, like with Dan talking about loud music, I mean, a nuisance could be a nuisance, I guess, is what I personally don't like. It offends me. So, well, I mean, in, in the Kentucky Revised Statute, there's a definition for all this stuff. What defines a nuisance? What, deserve, what defines a disturbance? What the, so that way, law enforcement officials and authority, they can say, yes, it meets the definition as a nuisance or whatever. And I just think you're setting, I just think you're setting Julie and them up with failure. If I get on something that's hard to be if we put the definition of nuisance in there. Because they can Google the definitions of nuisance. Well, he's not saying what. The actual definition of what nuisance means. But leaves it up to them to interpret it that way. Yeah. So we're going to say that the nuisance is a, is a noise violation, is an odor violation, is a. That, that's what he's meaning about. Most of these new subdivisions now are like HOAs and are probably going to be more restricted than this, anyways. Uh, so. I think you have to have some kind of wording in there. Otherwise, I mean, if you do have 12 roosters and they're all crowing at different times of the day, then. You have no recourse because there's nothing that says that's a, you have no crime. Well, we do have a nuisance ordinance also. 
that would relate to that too. I know the other night the crowd was tickled with the word nuisance. They, they, they had one, one anti chicken, everybody else seemed to be pro chicken. And, 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 and the person that was anti wasn't too anti, really. Uh, well, I don't care if you leave nuisance in there, I would just like nuisance to find so that Julie has parameters to follow so she's not caught in the middle of some chicken fight in the neighborhood. Of course, they thought it would help you and Ashley. Well, nuisance is fine. Just Julie, fine. would it help you if nuisance was out of there or it stayed in there and was it fine? I'm not sure about it. I'll be honest. That's what my feeling is, too. To me, this is probably something that if it, if it is, aggravating the people, it's going to come up again in the future. Right. And then we can look at what we did and refine it and go on. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I personally couldn't, I mean, uh, define what a nuisance is. I get aggravated at different things than you get aggravated. I'm sure, but... But, so anyway, uh, we will we'll need to, if, if we choose to go with this, we'll vote on the well, we we'll vote. tonight in. We don't, this we, is just first reading. Oh, we don't vote tonight? Okay. This well, is just first reading. Uh, Alright, okay. Alright, we'll, we'll do the next meeting then. Okay. Mm -hmm. so we're we're not changing that we'll be involved with it. Yeah. So if we want, so if we want to change something, we'll bring it up next meeting. I mean, you're still making a change to what it would be presented to you. I'm not sure it matters if it's well, now or later. We make a change on the second reading. The approval the second reading has changed. Like it doesn't get pushed back next meeting. I don't think it would. I think someone wants to try to change something. Change it. We have to vote so if there's if somebody wants to change something, they vote tonight or vote next time. I think you vote next time. Okay. Because your motion is going to be a motion with an amendment or addendum to what was presented. But next time will be the second reading, mm -hmm. and if we do vote to change, it'll become law, regardless. Right. Okay. All right. Unless of course it's different, but I think that's all right. All right. All right. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, well, we have, have the curb. curb. curb and, and that's curb. if you all choose to take it off the table. You put it on the table, I can't take it off. That is true. That is right. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, take the uh, curb uh, item from the table. So, I have a motion by myself, seconded by Will, mm -hmm. to take from the table uh, the, uh, the item of the uh, Changing to the county roads. So I think it's neither debatable nor amendable. So right. we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. So it's taken from the table. So uh, any discussion on this? Because this is also first reading. Uh, and, and last time we laid it on the table because we had some more considerations to make. So, you mean this is ordinance number one, fiscal year 2023, 2024, and it is an amendment to Article 4, Section 403.6, and Article 5, Section 511, pertaining to curbs and street widths of county roads. And I know you all. I know we all recall last last time we were discussing. Uh, you know, do we want to have something different in R, in residential versus non-residential? Uh, do y'all have anything to add to any of that? No. Well, actually, I, I talked to Julie earlier today about it. So, I think that non-residential should be exempt. So, if you have a business, if you put a business in, you probably can put drainage in anyway because you know much business you do on your parking lot. But I do think that residential areas, we should set a limit. I suggest that three acres. If you're building a subdivision with three acre or more acreage lots, then you shouldn't have to because you've got plenty of ground to, to absorb your runoff. Where if you're only on if you're 
on a smaller lot. I know, I don't know what the EPA did say about it, but I don't agree with what the EPA said. But I know in my subdivision there's a uh, small, I guess it's a ditch, a ditch line that runs through it. And everybody's drainage goes right into that ditch line. So anything, any chemicals, whatever they have in their yard, all goes right into that ditch line. Down below where Dwight's property, so all that water still goes up against their houses and then goes down into that property. So, or into their septic system. So, where I understand. He's talking about business versus residential. This is just pertaining to subdivision regulations, right? No. Uh, it's for all county roads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this doesn't have anything to do with city roads. This is just our, our roads. Right? Yeah. I'm just reading the line for yeah. Section 511 uh, Spencer County Subdivision <laughs> Regulations. <laughs> Uh, and Dan, I don't know that it has to be three acres, you know, if you're under an acre under lots, you need to put curb in it. Uh, whether it says three acres or an acre and a half, I don't know, if you're someone developing a subdivision, it's going to have probably an acre lots or less. You know, and, and some of the subdivisions that have one acre lots will have an acre and a half, two acre lots, just the configuration of them doesn't allow them to do an acre. So you're going to have more than one acre. It's almost all the subdivisions. Yeah, but if the rest of them are acre lots, they're not going to skip one, two acre lot with the curve. No, it's going to be it's going to be done all the same time. <clears throat> and I, I, I agree. We worked on this two years ago, maybe, and it came up with uh, with putting curbing and gutters on. Uh, and that's where I stand. I think we should keep it that way and not change it to uh, in lieu of two foot wider roads. What about someone's just say breaking off 10, 10 acre tracks? I'd rather see that than 100 acre tracks, but you're kind of enabling them to do that because you can't afford to put in carbon for 10 acre tracks. Well, you deal with you deal with our one here, right? You're not dealing with agriculture. No, Every county roads. County roads. Period. Right. All county roads. So that's just what I'm saying. If someone's got a hundred acre farm with ten acre tracks, or gorgeous, what say less than agriculture, how do you afford to put in turbine for a ten acre track? According to what this what what the what it's reading right now, if we don't change it, like Worcester Lane, we we'll put in that new section of Worcester Lane, move it over to what we were talking about there at one time, just put cut carbon gutters in where it's going to grow. So that's what I'm saying. I don't agree with it. Uh, so businesses shouldn't have to have curbing. Uh, county roads themselves shouldn't have to have curbing. But I do think there should be some rule for subdivisions. Now, what that is, that's for discussion. So you're saying one acre tracks for less? You should get curbing there. That's not going to be concerned. I agree with that. I agree with that. Because even if there's a two acre track in, say, what Jim's scenario, you know, you can't skip one lot putting in curb. No, it should read that if, if the subdivision has, if it's a subdivision and it has one acre lots, just because there's a two acre lot here or an acre and a half there, the, the whole subdivision should have to have If it contains at least one lot that's yeah. less than one acre, yeah. You just can't create a loophole. Yeah. Because that would be it. I have one three-acre track, all the rest on my acre, but I got three-acre lots, so I get curved. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, so you're going to have one one-acre lot out of 300 lots in there, yeah, and you're going to you're gonna curve them all. So this is still a first reading. Uh, we'll have time to prepare a little better, unless you all want to. We can vote tonight to uh, change the wording and then approve it next second reading, correct? However, you choose. I don't know. Does it make a difference for you if it was on the table? Is that still considered a first reading? That's what I'm. Uh, I mean, you took an action, but it wasn't. It was just the table. Yes. Yeah. Right. I think this would still be considered first reading. I think this yeah. would still be your first reading. So. Yeah, because, well, and it has to be because you have to advertise in the paper for the second reading. In the table, then they want to dispose of them. Correct. Yeah. I feel like the motion I would make it, but I don't know how to make it because there's a whole lot. That actually really needs to be in there. Uh, so, if curbing for subdivisions that have one acre lots 
or less. In the county. In the county. Yeah, anything that's going to and be proposed to go into the city has to have permit, yeah. no so, matter and what then zoning. We should it exempt is. businesses and county roads, rural county roads that uh, aren't in subdivision. And that one thing that we have to consider going forward is we may have county supervisors <coughs> in the future, and this will apply to those. So, you know, if there is, we, we can have the residential neighborhoods that are less than an acre yeah. out in the county that would be hooked up to the county sewer uh, and see they would have to have a curb and have to have a curb. Right. So emotionally so so say if you did curbing on one acre on subdivision residential subdivision developments on one acre with lots of one acre or less. That or less would cover yes. And you, you could say, or even say new subdivision. Yeah, well, this will be moving forward. It won't catch what's already out there. Right, but I mean, that would mean that way. If you decide to redo one of the neighborhoods as a county, now that's a county road, you would have to have to the purpose of it as a county. If you shall have curbing we're now going to say that all new residential developments with lots one acre or less shall have curbing so moved second all right we have a motion by mike seconded by will to uh, change the uh, for to add the change the language in this first reading of what you said can you repeat say that again what is it? That, that what you just first read? reading the last time? This okay. is your second reading? This first reading. Now, see, we got to advertise it for the second reading. It was. I thought, Corey, said it was an on this table. This would be the first reading. Well, and this table to, to the, the point reading. of publication, you know, looking at 838060, uh, in order to have the publication, you're changing the language of the ordinance, and then in order to have the publication, you think you'd need to it have the second reading. Read. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and which goes back to the nuisance question on the chickens, that you're going to add that definition, which would be you know, statutory, I think it's 411. Uh, uh, yeah, I we one, 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 one at a time, yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Will that not cover? We didn't add any chickens. Because that was in the paper. Yeah. It was that. <laughs> Or whatever um, okay. for that. 
but we'll still have folks notice that we're going to do a second reading at the next meeting. Gotcha. Okay. All right, hurting the ordinance. Yeah. We're good on the change. The has been changed. Now we're doing curve. Well, I was, we'll go back to the chicken because. Yeah. Yeah, we got a motion and a second, so we're discussing. Motion and a second. Yeah. It's not for the, the residential. So, All right. Yeah. Right. We're going back to talk about chicken again. But, uh, so, so now we'll open up to discussion. Uh, so basically, if, if what this is changing is the R1, an acre or less, has to have the curb and gutter. It doesn't address the size of the road. It, 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 then the rest of the roads will be what? Will they be what we're saying in lieu of? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be curb and gutter, but they'll be how wide? Well, do you want to make 40 feet? They'll be like go? they were. Um, like, unless you want to go with the 26 feet. The 26 feet total. With 22 feet. Yeah, so that, that's still the there. Yeah, that's still that's there. It's still open there. Okay. to you. All, All right, I got you. No, wait, wait. Excuse me, I, I, I'm lost here. Uh, are we saying that uh, uh, agricultural development, say 10 acre tracks, got to have 26 feet wide? Unless you say different. Well, uh, well, well I it, it's 22 plus two feet on the shoulder. shoulder. Right now it's 20 foot black top and two foot on the inside. We're for two existing feet. county road. We're New county road. We're making it two feet wider. Black top. For, for what? For everybody except all in one. Got in the county. Right. Is Minimum. It, again, we're going back to your. Uh, your 300 acre farm with 10 acre tracks. You're going to have somebody to put a 20, uh, 26 foot wide road in that's going to be 20 foot? Well, it'll be a 22 foot of blacktop and two feet, yes. That then we'll never have roads like we got now where Honda Accord runs off and drags. <laughs> we're, Ever talking, again. we're talking about two different things here. We're talking about curtain gutters to begin with. Now we're talking about making uh, yeah, anything other than. You didn't do the curtain gutters. You See, yeah, the, the, this started out in lieu of the curb and gutter on the 300 acre farm, we would do this proposal. So we're leaving that in, but we're restricting it. If you're R1 of an acre or less, you just got to have curb and gutter. Right now, agriculture, what Jim's saying is, is we got 20 foot of black top, two foot on the right, two foot on the left. Is that right? I think we should keep it that way. I don't think we should change that for us. So you don't want to require that to be bigger? I, I don't. Okay. That's fine. I mean, that's... Uh, I'm just... There's a lot of big tractors and stuff. A lot of big semis and everything else. You don't want to start driving down these narrow roads. Let's make them bigger ones. I'm just saying, I drive bigger equipment. Stuff gets skinny real quick. As you go around the county. School buses and everything else. We're getting more school buses, more kids and stuff. I think we all take a step progressively forward to add an extra two feet. Well, basically, right now we we would have to. Right now, it's it's 22 feet plus two foot. If we make a change, someone would have to amend the motion to change that width from 22 down. If y'all like how it is, then we we don't have to. I was already 22 feet. Because it's in the proposed language. Oh, it's in this proposed. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what, I, that's what we leave. That's, yeah, just because I'm, I'm, I'm for a big one. Well, in reality, all you're getting is two foot wider block top because you're already spending the money on the rock no matter what. But your additional cost is two foot. Right, and yeah, a two top. foot of rock that's under that right. block top. I mean, it, it'll add 10% because you're doing two feet instead of point. It'll add 10% of the block top expense. But then you'll forever, in my opinion, forever have a road that you won't be dropping off the edges like we do on our little pink path roads we have now. I know. Until you run off the edge. So I got a tire too, bro. But anyway, okay. so is, is there any is there any amendment? Uh, anyone like to make an amendment to the motion we have? If not, we'll go ahead and vote on this this change on the first reading. All right, hearing none. Uh, I'll just do the voice vote. All those in favor of the amendment for this first reading, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Motion passes. So we'll advertise that, and then we'll have a second reading. Okay. And now, go ahead. I'm sorry, Will. Well, I think I figured it wrong. I was just going to ask her about, but I already answered my question. Like, someone puts a private drive in, they want the county to go to county specs. This is going to be the new spec. Yes. Even if you got like a six track, you know, private drive, 
you're going to have to go to this now. Yeah, when the county builds a new road or someone builds a new road, so they'll have to build it 22 feet. We should have looked at the entrances. Yeah, we, can do, and all this. we can do it anytime. Yeah. We can do it anytime. All right, chickens. Are we circling back? I've never done this where there's been a motion on a first reading, so I'm going to have to have some guidance. Okay. So, so what we need to decide on the chickens, it's basically, uh, if we if we choose to change the nuisance part, correct? And we got to have a public, it's got to be posted if we change that. So if it's going to be changed, it needs to be changed right now, correct or wrong? So she can advertise for the second reading <coughs> for the new verbiage in the uh, yeah. ordinance. Do you got the definition of nuisance for? Uh, it's the termination of a private nuisance there as 411.550. Uh, in determining whether a defendant's use of property constitutes a private nuisance, the judge or jury, whichever is the trier of fact, shall consider all relevant facts and circumstances, including the following. A. The lawful nature of the defendant's use of the property. B. The manner in which the defendant has used the property. C. The importance of the defendant's use of the property to the community. D. The influence of the defendant's use of property to the growth and prosperity of the community. D. The kind, volume, and duration of the annoyance or interference with the use and enjoyment of claimant's property caused by the defendant's use of the property. F. The respective situations of the defendant and the claimant. And G. The character of the area in which the defendant's property is located, included but not limited to all applicable statutes, laws, or regulations. And then section, uh, subsection 2. The defendant's use of property shall be considered as a substantial annoyance or interference with the use and enjoyment of the claimant's property. If it would substantially annoy or interfere with the use and enjoyment of property by a person of ordinary health and normal sensitivities. So we want to incorporate that definition. We can easily include and or nuisance as defined by Kentucky Revised Statutes, Section 411.5. So many. I'm going to put my opinion down if you need to leave it be and let everything someone else worry about it. Everything in that there. Right there. there. That right there was very simple. <laughs> it don't matter if you put that in there or not. It's still going to be, this is a nuisance this night. Right. It'll be in court besides our court. It'll be no court. If that's that big a problem, I'll let it go there. My opinion. <coughs> so, uh, that's my opinion. I want to make a motion that we leave the uh, first reading as the uh, plan is only submitted it to us. And we pass it to the to the second reading. Second. All right. I have a motion by myself, seconded by Dan, that we accept the plan and zoning's recommendation to us as as is, and proceed to the second reading on the poultry chicken ordinance. Any discussion? Well, I thought the definition was going to be a little more cut and dry than that. So I'm with you. All right, uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Chickens win. Move on to the chickens. <laughs> Move on to the chickens. The headlines. I love the headline when it said chickens win. <laughs> Everybody loved it. All right. Uh, you want to squeeze it? Yes. Yes. All right. We're, we're going to uh, work change with you, do a little change with the agenda to rush get some people in that drove a few miles. So go ahead, Will. Uh, All right. Seth, you want to come up here? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, it's this right here. But basically this, you know, we've, we've been discussing uh, animal shelter, and we've been discussing different ways to do it, different ways we have to do it, this, that, and the other. So anyway, uh, Seth, got these plants. This is Seth. I'm with Walters Buildings. Uh, we worked with Will and uh, a couple of others just trying to uh, get back on the animal shelter here. And uh, we worked up just a rough set of prelims off what you all had. And uh, just kind of wanted to get your all's take on it. And I believe the next best step for Walters would probably be, you know, get a finalized floor plan. Uh, you know, that would help us move forward in our process. That's a big reason I asked Seth just to come. So if you guys could look at this and see what you like, what you don't like, so he could hear it firsthand from you. One thing, the kennels, mm -hmm. they have to be open to the outside. Yes. It yes, is a solid concrete block wall. Yes. And like I said, this was just a start. 
you know, um, whether you have to make the changes to be in the middle or the real office would be on the yes, sir. Yeah. It's kind of how I had it laid out, uh, you know, before, and then I gave him a, a Jim's revised drawings that we all talked about how we thought we'd want the changes. Uh, I think the other than that, I mean, I think very similar to the original drawing. Similar to what you had? I don't know. I believe the only thing that we would maybe discuss was a spot for like uh, HVAC, hot water heater, and stuff like that. I suppose that could go in the uh, storage room. Yeah, and side. I think that after we talked about that, I think we spoke about that in here, and I think that's what we all thought. Just yeah. frame up a uh, you know whatever size yeah. you need for uh, you know your hot water heater and your furnace and stuff, and just box that in here in the storage. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Then, you know, the only other thing, plan-wise, which I can think of, uh, brought up, we was talking about HVAC, how to do that, uh, you know, because you don't want returns in the kennels for your air going to your offices. Uh, yeah, and the offices smell like garlic the other day. Um, yeah, so it might have to be like a split system or something, was my thoughts. Could you discuss with them to make sure that, uh, you know, Whatever is in here, you know, like ADA compliant and all that stuff, too. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. Cool. We had talked about that. I believe we might have to make the bathroom just a bit wider. Oh, yeah, that was something. Um, and um, I'll confirm that with Jim Rollins and make sure uh, we've got the correct specs on that. So, in the floor, is this, uh, there needs to be a drain system for, for every the drain into a master of drain. So I don't know whether you included the concrete in there or not. But we hadn't included anything on that. Um, I think, you know, with Walters, you know, what you all need from us, you know, are you all going to want us to do the architectural side of things? Um, you know, so we do have architect. We have a structural engineer that's on our staff that we keep on all the time. He can do like structural engineer drawings. Uh, other than that, as far as, you know, if you all want Walters to take care of the, uh, like anything that would need to be possible civil for the sewer or anything like that, we'd have to go outside of Walters. Well, I talked to him about this too, and Julie's still in here, so uh, I don't see us needing some sort of civil plan for what we're doing. It's pretty simple cut and dry. The sewer and water, you know, will go Sisler and then we'll draw something up. When we pull, say, a permit for this, what are we going to need to give you guys? So the engineer set, Yeah, it, it'll have to be an engineer set. We, On the structural have... side? Or, mm -hmm. So you just need a structural stamp saying this building right. will withstand snowfall rain. I mean, you don't need a, a stamp for you know, the only the plumbing and stuff and inspectors can inspect inside the building. I mean, we don't need a civil plan for something as simple, I don't think. Steve when Clark's you, building doing... inspector says you need to have either an architect or an engineer stamp plans. I built 10 of them and two of them commercial never had a stamp plan. I'm just telling you what Steve Clark, I know Steve Clark, Clark well. Well, I do too, I and mean, that's what he's, that's what he's telling Did you call him and ask him? Well, I think it's going to happen because I take the last time you all did this, I texted him while we were sitting in the meeting and asked him, and I think it's because it is commercial and you can have people occupying in that, you know. Is any public way. works project yeah. is what Steve said. That it has yeah. to be stamped. But you can do that for us. Yeah, with any commercial mm -hmm. deal like this. Commercial yeah. structure engineer. Yeah, structure yeah. Engineer. we just yeah. don't have architect on staff for, you know, your. HVAC needs and uh, you know doing schematics on stuff like that that would have to go outside of the office. And we can do that. We'll just, the engineer or architect would stamp the building, not the plumbing, not the electrical. It would be the building itself. Yes, yeah, so that's what they got. They got structural yes, engineer. Yeah, structural. Correct. Yes. Yep. 
Well, that guy's is no good. If you're saying that Steve Clark is going to make you have no, HBA. I think, well, I think, no, what they have is what he's saying. I think Steve Well, that's what I'm saying. But we'll, we'll, I don't we'll think we'll Jim will yeah. agree. What's my understanding? You, his words exactly is if it's funded by taxpayers of public works project of stamp from an engineer or architect, architect is required on the form. Yeah, so that's just an engineer. Yeah. But, you know, what we'll have to do, we're going to have to bid this out since it's over. Yeah. And we'll advertise for bids and then we'll accept bids. And, you know, we're, we're going to have to reach out to some of your competitors to sure. give us an offer and so forth. But, I mean, we're lucky to accept the bid. Yeah. Well, the yeah. biggest thing right now, I think we need to get something that we're bidding on. Yeah, we need to stamp drawings so that everybody knows what they're bidding on. Sure. Is everybody open to the Well, these, well kids, yeah. this is his drawing. Yeah, this is for our, for our uh, This is your right right right. Right. Well, well, I just thought, like, if we all, like, like this, if we all agree that we like this. Well, basically, we use Jim's drawing. This is, this is Jim's drawing. Yeah, he drew this off of Jim's drawing. So, I mean, Corey, since we're, uh, we went to his competitor with the same information and they drew us up something, is that, would that be uh, acceptable bidding? Yeah, kind of, kind of, well, Guys, I'll tell you what, let me interject here. We've been going through this since yeah. January. Uh, the building committee and we brought recommendations back to you guys. Seth came out and gave us a bid of 155 to build a building and which included the windows and doors as a package. Okay, you knew, at that time you said you could not do the finished work inside. That's what you told us. Yeah. Now, to do what we're wanting to do, we're back to square one again. You know, we, we've got to have a set of stamped drawings regardless of who they come from. The last thing I remember was you bring something in and paying thirty thousand dollars for architect. Was the last thing I remember. And I don't think y'all giving us a stamp drawing. You can correct me if you're wrong. It cost thirty grand. The same set of plans from us. Yes, sir. On the structural side of things, if we were just to buy you to buy your place, yeah, you know, we're getting that. Yeah, we may not use you. Sure. Yeah, we're gonna buy your yeah. place. Yeah. Y'all yeah. set up plans. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to go back to Jim Rollins yeah. and get a figure on that and get it back to you. Well, we, and we talked to him. We, we met with y'all the other day. We talked to Jim and Jim. Okay, y'all can give us a turn to you do it if you want. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we can buy a set of plans from you, and then we can do the proper bidding out. And then we can choose when. Well, go, 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 right, go, right, go right ahead with that. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. And then I'll run them by Steve Clark to make sure everything suits him and then we we'll move forward. Yeah, what I'd like to do, Jim, is have all this uh, by Christmas time, have all the outside at least done. That's why we're trying to move forward. Well, I'm talking with Seth and Jim. You want that to be achievable, something needs to happen Quit. real soon because they got a lot of big projects. So, you know, if we talk about this, we're telling him, we have to make a motion to pay somebody to do the plans. He doesn't know the cost. He's got to get the cost. We're going to bring it to the next meeting to approve spending X, Y, Z. Then he's going to put us into the end of September. And yeah, that's the best we can do because we have to follow the procedure. And we, yeah, right. What's that? Six thousand. Motion. What is that cover? Uh, I, I think it's actually before like up to. I mean, I, yeah. Well, I say he just gets it if we got to have a special meeting. Uh, we'll have a special meeting. I'm you ready to get this to do. That's what I said. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. The reason we have special meetings is so we don't have any books. <laughs> well, Sorry. What, what Jim just said, we we're in business since the January, and we ain't made no So, but anyway, we'll look. So what we do this for? Well, I mean, what, what do we want to do? Do we want to do a motion and say, you know, what you say, eight pounds? For a set of plans for animal plans. Well, if I was a contractor, my plans would cost eight thousand. Well, I know. Well, you know, I don't think we're going to put this guy on the spot tonight and say, you know, let him, let him go back and come back 
Uh, and, and communicate with, with the judge in the next two or three, four, five days, yeah. whatever, and say, yeah. this is what it's going to cost. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, that, that special meeting doesn't vote on that. We can. Yeah. We can. We can. I mean, as long as we keep it under four hours. Yeah. I'll go back to Jim. Yeah, that'd be I'll great. Get you all all right. Right. On a set of, a set of plans for this right here. Okay. And, um, you know, I'll try and get you something within the next couple of days. That'd be well, great. Are you going to make the yeah. modifications on the kennel? And yes. So, so, and so that they're cut out? Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have a set of plans for that? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what we want. Yeah, I got a good amount of that. It shows all the outside boats. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. Do you, need, do you need a site plan also? I mean, for us, as long as we can have the building corners staked out when we get there, or, you know, we'll have to have the building corners staked out a couple times, you know, during site prep. We, 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 we don't make the level spot. Yeah, as long as that's ready, um, for us, personally, we don't need it. We wouldn't have to have it. Um, you know the corners in the front? Final elevation and ready to go. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, thank you. All right. We'll thank thank you. Look, 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 be looking forward to hearing from you. Yes, sir. Next few days. I know we have uh, another fellow in the crowd with the uh, fiber. What's that? Bluegrass fiber. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If y'all like to address us, yeah. uh, and I think that'll get everyone that's far away. So we can, we're working on you. We're getting to you. Go oh, another hour. No, we'll be there for you. All right, go ahead. I'm not going to talk about any chickens or anything like that. Uh, despite our name, uh, I'm Derek Phillips with Bluegrass Fiber. This is uh, Jeremy. Despite our name, we do not uh, we do not specialize in being fire and fiber. We are an ISP. Um, we specialize in uh, providing internet to uh, rural residents, farms, and uh, campgrounds even. Um, so Spencer County has been reaching out to us the past few uh, several months. Actually, uh, your residents trying to because as you all are probably very well aware, living here, uh, access, especially out in the county, is, to high speed in, high speed internet is not uh, is not in the cards. Now these pamphlets we're looking at right now, uh, that's our current product that we offer uh, Spencer County or uh, Shelby County, Franklin County, part of Anderson County. Um, these are not the these are not the speed of products that we're wanting to offer down here. Um, as I said, uh, with all the all the interest that we got from Spencer County, we started doing some research. Um, as you all are aware, more than 80% of your residents are considered underserved under the IIIJA, uh, meaning that uh, less than 20% of your residents in the county um, have access to broadband speeds of at least 100 megabits per second. Um, some of them, as you know, and some of you may not even have access to uh, internet speeds anywhere near even. 25 megawatts per second. Uh, am I correct? We need the internet here. So um, the the way that uh, I've been talking to Lusanna a little bit, um, and I believe that she scored some information on a new product uh, called Toronto Wireless. Um, it's a fixed wireless product, which is what we specialize in. Uh, however, unlike what uh, the what's out there now, and even the products that we have, um, this this uh, technology can deliver hundreds of megawatts per second to your most remote resident, down near the lake, whatever it is. Um, I don't know if any of you are, are follow the WIS community or ISP industry whatsoever, um, but this Toronto Fixed Wireless has been showcased uh, most recently in Indiana, for instance, for the Kentucky Broadband Association. Um, when Bede and uh, the IIJA came out and they wanted to focus on all the fiber and everything like that, the reason is because fiber is considered a far more reliable product than fixed wireless. Fixed wireless requires, uh, you know, communication between a dish on a customer's house and a, a radio on a tower. So that requires line of sight. Now, you all live in Kentucky just like me, line of sight to a tower from your house is rare. Um, so, because of that, um, these products aren't considered reliable. Uh, Toronto Wireless is a very different product. Um, it was uh, in development for over a decade. Uh, we've been following it for several years. Been very excited about its release. Um, it was finally released a couple years ago and exceeded all expectations. Most of this information, these packets here are about Toronto Wireless. 
most of it's stuff I can't even explain. <laughs> it explains why the technology, especially those last several pages, why the technology is so incredible. Um, so what bluegrass fibers want to do is, uh, we're in the early stages. We, I can't give you big costs. I can't give you uh, designs or plans because we just started talking to you all a couple weeks ago. Uh, we need information regarding towers and things like that. Um, however, um, I can guarantee you that not within years, like the fiber plants, Charter's already got a fiber project. That's going to be years. And some of your uh, residents down near the lake in certain areas aren't going to be seeing any results for even a decade because just the terrain, it's impossible. And these companies that come in, fiber is very expensive to deploy. Um, they're not going to come in and just go, who needs it, who needs it the most? They're going to go, where's the big bang for buck? We've got to start here, we've got to pay for this project. So they're going to start with your big neighborhoods, things like that. That's not what Bluegrass Fibers want to do. We want to come down here, we want to work with you guys, um, and we want to find out where your needs are. And fixed wireless, unlike fiber, uh, can be deployed in a fraction of time. Um, because you're putting equipment on a tower, and as soon as you've got that equipment goes live, everybody within, with Toronto, 9 to 10 miles around that type tower that can, can, can be connected. Um, so it really is incredible. We've been following results. The first few pages of this packet, um, and I'm trying to stick to three minutes. <laughs> the first few pages of this uh, packet, I did highlight some things. That meta link, for instance, that case study on the, uh, I believe the fourth page, I printed uh, not enough packets for me to have one. So you have to bear with me. Um, these are results we've actually seen. I've spoken to uh, the providers, uh, for instance, at MetaLink. Um, he's shown me the re these results. They really are delivering uh, incredible C speeds through topographies and foliage that's very similar to Spencer County. So in addition to the, to the product, we want to come into the county. We want to uh, offer jobs to the community. We want to be involved in community events. Uh, we have technological capabilities that can allow us to uh, provide outdoor Wi-Fi for, um, for festivals, things like that. Um, and like I said, campgrounds is one of our specialties, even with our current product. So we do have, um, in the very back, the last page there, um, Lisanna asked me to bring some cost uh, analysis. I absolutely, hands down, do not have enough information for that. We haven't done any engineering projects or anything like that. But the last paper of that, um, it has a quote. This is the last quote we got um, for putting up uh, all the equipment on a 360-degree tower covering everybody. Now, we don't know how many towers we're going to need. We don't know anything like that. Um, but that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to open discussions with the community, uh, with the communities, with the county, and try to find out where your needs are and if you're willing to you know, go forward with that. Now, because, as you know, you're 80, over 80% 80 underserved, ARPA funds were granted to you for, you know, through the, uh, through the uh, internet, internet Investment, or Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, double IJA, that's what I call it. Um, and we're wanting to access some of those funds um, put, pull them with our resources to actually transform the uh, internet infrastructure of Spencer County residents. And that's all I have. Um, I can answer more questions, um, and that's what I'd rather have done the whole time. Right. It's just you all ask the questions. So I can ask questions real quick. Yep. Um, so this on this last page here, this estimate, so that's per tire? Yeah, that's for a that's for one that's for a 360 degrees on that tower. Now I'll cover nine to ten miles. Yeah, around yeah, a radius of nine to ten miles. Okay. So eighteen miles. Yeah. Way across five straight. Yeah. So yeah. Radius of nine to so yeah. eighteen. So a square mileage of I can't do five in my hands. Let's see. Six miles I think is a square of hundred and eleven, right? All the way around. If you have six miles this way, six miles that way. Something like that. Um, but yeah, we it's not gonna one tower is not gonna cover Spencer County, of course. Um, and we don't know how many towers. And we're also not necessarily going to need five 360 degree towers. We uh, will have uh, some towers that might just need a couple of sectors. Um, and again, we want to work with you guys. And we also don't have to, you don't have to grant us a million dollars and us come in and do all the Spencer County. We could come in, we could do a little bit, you all could try it out, see what you think of it, and make, a, make an informed decision. If, um, if we were to make it, let's say we were to make an investment, I mean, I've, I've got maps at my office, and pretty much everything, uh, Ashes Creek, Mount Eden area, yeah. 
and then down Ashton Creek over, over toward the Wheels area is probably the most underserved as far as residents. Yeah, we tried to help out these numbers. Yeah. Uh, dots on the map. So, if you went up on a water tower, I mean, we, we've got a big tall tower up at our road department that nine miles one direction uh, would probably get nearly the amount even, I don't know. But, but anyhow, what if an investment was made and 100 people is all that signed up? I mean, are y'all going to pull out? Or? Uh, no, we're, we're going to we're gonna keep chucking away at it. We're a small ISP. We're not at and coming in here. <laughs> we're a small business um, and we're going to focus our efforts here. Yeah. Um, we don't need thousands of subscribers to, especially uh, with ARCO Hunt Funds helping um, support the cost of the actual equipment on the tower. We don't need thousands of subscribers to, to make it profitable for us. Um, and we also, uh, we're, we're also really we, this company started because we wanted to help people out, um, and that's and it became a business. Because uh, Brent, uh, our owner Roy, who's since passed, um, our one of the founding owners, he was the whole goal was for him to find internet for him and his neighbors on Benson Valley in uh, Franklin County, um, and he found that uh, with fixed wireless, and then it just spread word of mouth. Uh, we only started advertising about 18 months ago before then it was word of mouth. Um, so we're not going to pull out because something didn't happen. And speaking of Mount Eden, we're already leasing a tower on Mount Eden, um, uh, Mount Eden Water Tower on Driscoll Road. Um, we could even deploy, uh, uh, you know, some Toronto there, and you could see the results. That's a terrible area. I'm sure you're familiar with Driscoll Road. I mean, it, it looks like a giant came through and just scraped, just scraped the topography. Uh, so. That would be an ideal because we've tried to deploy there with our legacy equipment right now. We just we just can't really make any a substantial impact. Um, and uh, you know these these last mile fixed wireless connections are the only thing that's going to help people like us. So I live in Owen County, so uh, fiber's coming through, but it's going to be years before it has an impact. Are you all able to uh, grasp on to the state funding and federal funding? That's all the investments going into with Toronto. We with Toronto, Toronto. We can to a limited degree, but navigating that for a small ISP is really hard for us. It is something we're working on, but all that bean money was eaten up by charters so quick we couldn't turn our heads. <laughs> so uh, and uh, I mean it makes sense, but for. Uh, for most of America, it's going to take a it's going to take a collaboration of fiber, fixed wireless, and even other technologies. Um, where I live, for instance, I don't see how anything's ever going to reach me down that hall. <laughs> I, I, I was looking for an envelope. I wrote stuff this morning. I read this morning. USDA has just announced more broadband right. programs, yep. uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like the sixth round of funding. Yeah, I mean, you all are aware of, of all these other avenues of funding? A little bit, yeah, but we're a community-based ISP, so like I said, we found a community. Your, your residents came to us and said, hey, help us out, or, or are. Um, we can't do that with our current technology, and we're not too proud, proud to admit that. Um, however, Tirana um, could do that, um, and for, you know, just a fraction of the cost of fiber. So yeah, we could go through all of, the, all of these uh, federal funds. Um, and that's an option also that we're exploring, but we'd rather work with you guys. And we'd rather, you know, just we could, like I said, we could start small. We don't have to, we're not going to ask for a million dollars. We're just asking you to tell us, come in here, prove what we can do, prove how much we can uh, improve the lives of your residents, and uh, we can go from there. Uh, I'm so confident that Toronto's going to do what it says it's going to do that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to take any risk. <laughs> Toronto ought to come with a trial run and mm -hmm. where you already have that water tower uh, leased or whatever. <laughs> that they need to set up on there and it. hook up some people where we can have some yeah. testimony. Uh, Toronto does have that. Um, that's That pack is full of it. Uh, like I said, uh, they'll be next month in Indiana with the Indiana Broadband Association, the people from Toronto Wireless. They've been de demonstrating this product all over to change the mentality of fiber is the only solution. Um, I'm sure you've been following. They found out very quickly that 42 billion wasn't going to get fiber to everybody. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we could do that, um, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> Is this your phone number? Uh, yeah. So that's yeah. That's uh, well. That's our company phone number. 
Um, that's not my personal phone number. I do have a card, cards that I can pass out. Um, I just wanted you to see who, who you, who I'm, who I'm, the business that's coming down here. Um, we don't do contracts. We're a hassle-free internet service provider. No data caps, no contracts. Um, those prices you see there, right there, is the exact price that your invoice is over for bluegrass fiber. Um, and that's why we spread so quickly with just word of mouth. Because we treat people with respect and we, we, we came from paying $150 for 20 meg and we, did, we didn't want that anymore. So we'll be bringing the same uh, ethical you know, business practice down here. Any other questions? What would it cost to get that drawn here to test it? It depends on where we put it, because, um, uh, and I don't have a quote for that, um, but it would be less. That quote that I've got there is, think about it, that's one tower with 360 degree coverage, which is for uh, what's called base nodes. So we could test with one base node, so you could take the price of three of those off there right then and there. Um, the battery backup, obviously that's something that's uh, important, but not necessarily urgent and if we put it on one of our current towers that already has a battery backup that's not it um, any either so um, it would be a fraction of that cost uh, some of those costs wouldn't go down though uh, the hybrid fiber cable for instance that's based on how long that cable is so uh, but if the biggest thing that we need and we've been trying to get and julie's so busy <laughs> Um, I've been talking to her. We're trying to get tower locations. Uh, I think that you had asked uh, or uh, asked Lisa Santa yeah. about the water towers. Yes. That is completely doable. Um, telecom towers is what we have access to because those are all registered with FCC. We can find those. Water towers are hard to find. Usually, you well, know, the, the cell tower there. at Waterford. Can you all go get up there right now and put something up there? Uh, tomorrow, no. But yeah, we could. Okay. Yeah. In a month, yeah. in two months, in a yeah. year. Yep, yeah, absolutely. It depends on how much coverage you want. As far as install, we would all all that would be in house. We'll be installing everything ourselves. We'll be handling mill mile connections. Uh, the only thing we're wanting to use ARPA funds for is the actual equipment that we put on the tower. Uh, like I said, just kind of meet us in the middle. We could deploy this ourselves, and we'd love to just pitch County. But it, it would take us years to make any substantial impact. And by then, um, you know, fiber is going to be coming behind the scenes. So. so. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, we could we could do that in a month or two. I mean, whatever. I mean, it, the sky's the limit, pretty much. Uh, and like I said, you're not working with AT&T, you're not working with Charter, you're working with a small ISP um, that can pretty much do anything without having to uh, get the lawyers involved. I mean, I I think this is interesting. Uh, do some more research and come back and see us. Yeah, more. I can do that. Um, the, the, the previous court uh, put aside. Five hundred thousand for broadband expansion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but we got plenty of places we can use that money. Mm -hmm. But we haven't did away with the importance of knowing that broadband is yeah. poor in so many places. Yeah, true. Really so bad. actually, we're looking at options that will pay dividends. Yeah, uh, it sound like we need a little more information from you. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'd like you come to us and say, all right, we can for this much money, we can serve. 2,000 residents at Mountie. This much yeah. money, we can do this. Okay. We, we need some concrete figures. We also need, with fixed wireless, unlike with fiber, it's it's location, 100% location based. Yeah. So something else that would help guide us in that decision is you tell us where, where are your needs. Mm -hmm. Like Because I know there is some fiber in Taylorsville. Um, yeah, Mount Eden, we know. That's a big one. Uh, but you mentioned the telecom tower, too. So. Um, the Mount Eden Tower we could do ourselves. We we're leasing that tower already, um, but it's a it's a terrible. I mean, it's pretty far up there. Um, There's a water tower right across from the lake that would serve a lot of people. Yeah, the lake is a big deal for us. We specialize in campgrounds, and we well, really want to get down there. There's a new AT&T tower up Mount Eden too. And with incumbent towers, we can use those as well. We just have to obviously be on a different height, and we have to go through that. So. But yeah, um, I can get you some prices on uh, throwing up a one sector to point somewhere on. You said uh, just send me the if you can just have with Santa or somebody send an address of the tower you're interested in. Yeah. Or we can do and we can do we'll, one. We'll, we'll get with you. Okay. We'll get with you on the market. All right. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, you guys that uh, are on the agenda a little later.
Do y'all enjoy the reinforcement or y'all got separate cold at home? I'm good. Chase, I'm ready to Sharon. Uh, Miss Lawson, I know you, you have the library stuff. Yeah, so, yeah but I've got like two so minutes. You okay? Because uh, I, I know he has to drive back home from somewhere. Indiana. Uh, Indiana. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, now, the reapportionment is on the agenda under on business, but I'm going to go ahead and we'll discuss that now. So, the floor is yours. All right. Um, my name is Joseph. I'm here from KIPTA, Kentuckiana Regional Planning and Development Agency. Uh, we've created this application here. I'm sure you all have seen it before. Um, that helps visualize and make changes to your uh, managerial districts for your redistricting. Um, I think where we left off last time, I was here, uh, voted to uh, basically extend until today. Uh, as it currently stands, all your from what changes that you've made thus far, you are in compliance. Um, but I understand there might be some things they want to talk about before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, basically this is what the reapportionment committee recommended, I guess, correct? I believe so. Now we did vote, I mean, we chose not to accept it, but that doesn't mean it was thrown in the trash. Correct, I think last time, um, no, they didn't want to vote in the absence of something. Right, right, yeah. So we're all here tonight. So we're basically picking up from where we were that night. Uh, and I mean, we, we can, uh, and I guess it'll be tonight, we, we can decide uh, that we can accept this or we can make changes and vote on it. Yes. I, from my boss, I think the deadline is now. I think it has to be, a decision has to be made uh, tonight, I think. Yeah, well, we had 60 days from when whenever we had that meeting where we didn't accept it 60 oh, days yes, yes, from sure. that meeting. You're right. I don't know if it's been since then. Well, it, it, it's at least been 30 because it was well, toward the end of July. So. But anyway, uh, I know Michael had some concerns and uh, basically the blue up there would be Michael's district, the green would be Jim's, and again, Jim had to shrink and everybody around him had to, had to eat it. But Wheels District could not eat in the Elk Creek because he can't knock Jim out of his district. So Waterford and uh, Taylorsville basically had to eat in the Elk Creek. Pretty much. I just had some, I just had some additional concerns, and I understand the blocks because I'm. I got the map and I'm clicking on the block. Yeah. Um, in the Waterford district, we're cutting Dutchman Creek and Goose Creek Road in half and giving it to Zach, which is all well and good, but it's like it's all the way across the river from him, hard to access. And, you know, and, you know, we got Waterford Loop and things, we got that tied back on there. Um, I just, you know, you barely got what I would call the heart and soul historically of water for Um When I would talk to initially, you know, I had to fight to get the water for Church of Christ back in the water for district. And uh, I would like to, to get more centrally located and Dutchman's Creek and Goose Creek people, they've been in water for district for since one percent of this, I would like to keep those those people in, in, in the water for district. And uh, well, there there's some there's some areas that takes up a lot of real estate and doesn't have a lot of people. Uh, kind of down Lily Pike uh, from basically from uh, the cell phone tower there at Waterford. You can take all the way in. You can take 44 to Lily Pike, all the way to Salt River Bridge, all the way down to Plum Creek. Take Plum Creek all the way back to to Highway 44, and you only had 15 people. What the heck is this? You don't get that right on paper. No. I mean, but you know, it's like I live in Plum Creek and Plum Bridge, and it's pretty centrally located, what you call the central part, the heart of Waterford area. 
But I don't, but Feather Bed Hollow is not in the water for district. You know, Hardest Ridge Road is not in the water for district. You know, so I think that's concerning that these people live in the heart of Waterford, but they're not in the water for district. Could we, could we let Lynn speak about the boating precincts? You know, I think we're getting, uh, we're getting the Waterford district, Elk Creek district, uh, like I say, yeah, Elk Creek same one. You know, I mean, uh, Elk Creek's not, it's not even in my district, or it's right on the line. You know, but where do we vote? You know, that's the whole thing. Here's the thing. It's the precincts we're voting in. It's not the area of that we live in anymore. It used to be that way, but not anymore. Well, I just want people that live in Waterford to be in the Waterford district. I feel like as long as they got support from somebody, it's like my district. I go across the river, same thing you're saying, all the way into Jim's backyard pretty much. Road, all the way to Shelby. That's what it's in. I'm going to Shelby County and I live in Mount Eden. And at the heart of Mount Eden, you know where the heart of Mount Eden is. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I think we need to get out of this. You know, I understand where you're coming from. This mindset of Elk Creek, Waterford, you know, uh, Camptail, whatever. But it's where we vote. We have, where do the, the people in Waterford vote? I mean, and how many voting districts are we going to have? That's to be determined after you all set the magisterial lines. The board I mean, but I can sit in my front yard and I can throw a rock over Bob Miller, Miller Montgomery's driveway and I threw the rock out of my district. You can do the same thing. You live in the edge of your district, just like I did. Well, I, was, I think. But I'm saying this, it's like, to the but, they keep the cro but they keep approaching me north towards Elk Creek. And I'm saying, I, let's make a step farther south and get the people that's in the heart of water. You know, but as, as we go along with this though. process, as population increases, Elk Creek is not going to be even in Elk Creek District anymore, period. Because Elk Creek District is shrinking the area. But it's increasing your population, so it's it's where you vote. It's not the area that you live in. Where are you going? I, I I disagree. Okay. Did you do something to show us how you would change this? Because I I can see your point somewhat, but I don't see how. I mean, I really don't. Just like, like I get. How do you how do you adjust that for population? You know where Green Bay lives? No. Yeah, he's he, on. Yeah, You know where the Waterford Firehouse is? Yeah. It's not in the Waterford Dix. And I'm like, how do you the intersection of Holy Four and Plum Creek, I consider. Well, now you can put, you can do that big old area I was talking about, and you and you put 15 people. What we need to do, probably, Michael, is, it's my opinion, is to go ahead and do trial and error while he's here, and he'll he'll click in a block, he'll he'll click in a block, and it'll show you on his map, and it'll show how many people's in it, and then it'll show how the thing changes, and then we can agree, we'll do that. Let's move to the next place and yeah. I mean you, you can I mean basically it's it's a what you want between all of us it's I just like to get a little bit more around the center of what's Waterford it ain't where I live it's just the center of what so I'm talking like 44 just east yeah mm -hmm. of Concrete Road forgive me I'm a Hoosier so yeah, I don't know you where you see Waterford yeah. that Doug and Dave uh, Doug yeah. meets to Michael I get blocked there yeah. Oh, I can't see the All right. That's all inside of Harsky Ridge. This particular, uh, this one right here. Yeah. You can, so, you can click on it. Yeah. Got 203 people. That's correct. So, just for example, if, oh, you can't have it, Mike. It's too many. If you did change it, you would see that uh, you changed District 2. And it updates the numbers there. Um, so now District 4 doesn't have enough people. And actually, District 2 now has too many people. See, we, we run about all these scenarios in well, the then instead of, it's, Well, then, instead yeah. of splitting Goose Creek and Dutchman's Creek Road in half, why don't I give them back to Zach? Then he can have the whole road and all the people there. Because that'll mess up somebody else. I just took a link from Zach, so why don't I give some more, some back to them? Okay. So go west of 144. You took 203 
They can block right, right there. Okay, no, no, I can't get another one back. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Change, put this one back to clean. Okay. Clean. Clean. I'll take all those. Yeah, but, but see, basically, and that was a, an, an approach we had is everybody below Highway 44. But, but then that, that's kind of some of your heart and soul water for people.
I'll entertain a motion to to accept this map. And motion to approve the map as it says. Second. All right. We have a motion by Jim, seconded by Zach, to approve the, the court's recommendation on the reapportionment map. Is there any other discussion? Have you talked to the school? Mm -hmm. okay. We need to talk to them about it. The school board members, right now, their lines align with the magisterial lines. Okay. So, okay. so you're, you're on the board of elections. Are the school board members that lives in our street circle? Mm -hmm. Does anyone, can anyone vouch for where school board members live in Kraft? Well, we can all work together on one that lives in mine, but she can obviously not her. I've got one that lives in Orchard Plum Creek, which is sad. So your your member is still good? My member's still good. Right, good. Well, well, your member's good, my member's good. Right. <laughs> if all the rest of them are good, then by default, my will be good. Well, well he may be good. Who is your Of course, that, as per the land, the reapportionment recommendation, the school board members were still good. Is that correct? Only until after the election. If they are reapportioned out of their district, then they won't be in their district anymore. They'd have to run in a different. Well, I'm saying, I think Scott's saying how it was before, the school board members were fine. The, I'm saying the reapportionment, when we started tonight, mm -hmm. the school board members were still good. Is as that far correct? as I know. Yeah. However, if they don't approve moving their board members' lines to mirror the magisterial lines, it will create split precincts, yeah. which will create extra blank uh, ballots. Ballot yeah. ballot. But, but all right, anyhow, as, as long as the reapportionment that we started on tonight still have them in line, then we can come up with, you know, if, where's your y'all school board member live? I want it. They're born Is it Miss uh, Miss Shelburne's Bloomfield Road. Yeah, Miss Shelburne means that. Mm -hmm. she's, not that she's good. I know Miss Ms. Clevenger here, she's good. And then, uh, I, who's the other three? We just got here, two. Aaron Earhart. Is there, is there a two or something like that? Timothy Tuit. Yeah. Tuit. I think he lives out towards the Elk Creek end of me. I think that's what I can see. Probably, so he's probably still in here. I think he's still good. All right. That's a big thing. And who would be at Taylorville? Uh, Any of the Taylorville School Board member? Pamela Stone. Yeah. Pamela Sloan. Stone. Not Sloan. 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 So she's still good? She's in the city limits? She's in the city. She should be. It says District 1 City. I don't know. She's still pretty good. Because they're all everything in the city limits. Well, it was in the city limits. No. It just says District 1. Last time I didn't see where I got. I took the old city limitation. You don't have the. I have part of East Lane. I have part of the road. Does anyone know her? You ever had her road before? I don't know. I'm just saying. Is that the move I had? Yeah. Or, no, we got big swimming games for it. It's where I'm on. Right. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's what's up. But anyway, <laughs> it, it sounds like they're probably still good. And that's the best we can do tonight. All right, so we got a public health. Did you have my motion for the end of the second? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. We have a, a motion and a second on the floor to approve this map for the county's recommendation on reapportioning. Is there any other discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Let's take care of. Thank you. Thank you. If you, uh, I'm, I'm going to turn off the uh, ability to change this now. Good. So that way, if Good. you all want to. Uh, do you have links to this map right now? I do. I'm looking at it. But I okay. Uh, I'll make it so that I'll be, nobody oh, has to really change anything. Okay. And you all can look at it as you please. All right. All right. Appreciate uh, your uh, patience bearing with us tonight. We've had a lot happening tonight. Still do. Thank you. Yeah, we need to go up to the club. I will. It's already been fun. Let's go. The committee is not going to report. Uh, all right, we're going to uh, continue on. We're still on the communications. Uh, Julie, I get we are going to you now, Julie, but we love having you here. 
Uh, unless you need to talk about something else. Uh, mer emergency management. Uh, I don't see Chris. Any anyone? Uh, parks. No, Mike. Maybe by Chris. Safety committee. Dan. Nothing. Uh, Jim. Solid waste. Nothing to report. Dan. Veterans. Nothing to report. All right. Uh, equipment. I know we have something to discuss later. Yeah, that's all I got. All right. Telecommunications. No. All right. All right. Over there. We roll. Uh, Mr. Cole. Corey. Nothing to report. Uh, break the Two areas of economic. Dan. Nothing. Okay, uh, now on page uh, 68. Well, there are some uh, slots in the fair booth if anybody wants to volunteer. Okay. Uh, Very easy. It's fun too. Page uh, uh, 68, 69, and 70 are our first uh, soil conservation plum creek watershed rates. Uh, they're just they're in your book. So for information. information only. Uh, so then on page 72 and 73, you have the extension office rates. All right, and then uh, page 74, we have the library. Ms. Lawson, hey. you're up. Okay. And we love it I when you join, no, no, no. join our meeting. I won't be awake long enough to take most of your time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the, uh, you, you have the documents, of course, and on August 8th, the library board adopted the compensating rate, which is one-tenth of one percent lower than last year's rate. So we're happy about that. Um, there is um, in your pouch, in your packet, an annual report. It, it's, it's very big on promotion because we want you to come to the library. We want you to have your kids and your grandkids and your women <laughs> and your dogs. I'll leave one out in the office. Okay. And it just tells us a little, tells you a little about what we're doing. We're doing all kinds of good stuff. Um, we're not about books anymore, not just about books. It's still, of course, our main brand, but we're about helping people. Uh, have the internet, have a meeting room, uh, go outside and exercise with their kids while they take the story trail and read the books and exercise at the same time. It's kind of hard to get any better than that. And um, we are good stewards of the tax money that we collect. We're renovating the annex building, that used to be Goldie's building, and for two additional meeting rooms. Because the first thing that happened when we finished our library in 2017, we opened the doors, we already didn't have enough meeting rooms because there were people who wanted to do this all the time. And I just want to let you know, if you ever want to ask me any question, financial, program, whatever, just call me. Oh, of course, yes. They're always free, but there is a caveat there. They're free, but they can't be used for like personal use, baby showers, you know, birthday parties, or anything like that. They have to be used for things that the uh, community is welcome to. So if a church group needed a, a place to meet for a business meeting or something? That might work. Sure. Yeah. No, we have a lot of so uh, HOAs. Over there. <laughs> yeah, just not not a party. Not a party. Not a party. Room, not a party. Although business. you know, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party uh, have met there. There, that was quite a party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No parties. No parties at all. All right. And that's all. All, all the right. time I'm going to take up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being supportive. I'm very happy. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We have a beautiful library. Everyone yes, take advantage. And it's one of the best kept secrets in Spencer County, so spread the words. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Nice uh, next you. is uh, Oktoberfest, 88. Oh, oh, I'm right. sorry, Jay. We had the health department. Oh, uh, the health department uh, is in your book. So, they have their rates there. So, now, page 88, Oktoberfest. Chase but evening, everybody. Um, we'll keep it short and sweet. The letters in their packet. Um, Octoberfest is a nonprofit 501c. There's about 10 of us that put on the festival one day a year. Um, typically, we do really well with sponsorships to fund our festival and grow it yearly. This year has proven a little difficult. Everything has gone up. Businesses are struggling a little bit. Sponsorships are harder to acquire. Now we're getting them, and it's just slower. Um, but our insurance went up and our music tent 
Um, those two things alone are $15,000. So we try to bring a lot into the community. Um, we advertise quite a bit on billboards. We've got Bullitt County sites this year. Um, to, to bring the festival that's, I would call it the largest the county has, um, yearly festival to us. So uh, we come before you tonight to ask for um, $5,000 and um, the, the, the rental of the porta potties and dumpsters like you all have done yearly in the past. Now we're gracious for anything you all um, give. Um, we, we're good stewards because most some years we don't have it to spend. So we, we, we spend it wide. I like a motion to give October Fest $5,000. Second. All right, we have a motion by Will, seconded by Dan, to uh, uh, make donations to October Fest uh, $5,000. We can amend that motion. Right now, sir. I'd like to amend that motion to say $15,000 instead of five. Second. All right, we have an uh, amendment to strike out the words, or the letters of number 5,000 and insert uh, 15,000, uh, motion by Jim, seconded by Mike. Any other discussion? I'd like to amend say, the, I'd like to amend the amendment to add the verbiage and pay for the board I think that's already in there. All you have is for 5,000 and pay for the board Yep. 15, and yeah, that's oh. fine. Yeah. All right. You want second his motion? I'll second. Yeah. All, right. All right. So we have an amendment to the amendment to uh, also add the language that also we paid for the porta potty and dumpster. But motion, right. amendment by Mike, second by Jim. Now open floor for discussion. I just want to say I, I sat on the, the homecoming committee for several years back in the seventies, and it's a lot of work. A lot of people here have sat on the committees doing that, and the expenses have gone up. This is one of the biggest things that happens in Spencer County every year. And the county really, to my knowledge, the court has not really supported you guys very much. Maybe pay for the I don't, court. I don't know if we came to the court. We well, anyway, tried to. But, uh, you know, we give to the Chamber of Commerce. You know, we give to this, 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 this. But this event, you know, it affects a lot of people in the county. So that's why. I, I think we're all in agreement here. I mean, the city, the city, you know, puts in, and it's in the city. But this is the biggest opportunity for us as Spencer County, as a county, to showcase ourselves and, and draw the people and tell what Spencer County is all about. So that's why I'm with you. All right. Any other discussion on the amendment? Uh, all right. We'll vote on the the amendment that states that we'll add and pay for port potties. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Now we have uh, the motion as amended, which will say that uh, the donation will be 15000 and we'll pay for the porta potties and the dumpster. Any other discussion on that? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Now we have the motion as amended, which now says that uh, the French County Physical Court We'll uh, consider uh, donating $15,000 to the Spencer County Oktoberfest and also pay for the cost of porta potties and a dumpster. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Chase, you're very convincing. We 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 great. Doctor, I'm still bringing up, you know, asking for more money. You hang with us, you know. Too. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the question I have, and this is probably going to be taken offline. How does the county want to be incorporated? Like spawn, like name yeah, wise. Yeah, we just want help. Free admission. Right. Free admission. We got it. If you want to ride the rides, Mr. Travis, I'll bring it. I'll ride it. <laughs> right. no, but I'm very happy. This, this court is supporting this community. Well, I appreciate it. We, we supported the fair, and I, I'm happy that we can support this. And, uh, we we have we have made some investments with some funds that we have. We've got a CD that's earning almost five percent interest. We can make donations like this. Oh, I really greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. We're, we're rolling right on. Let's we'll see. see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give you another. <laughs> Okay, seven, number 17, I guess it'll be the next page. Yep. 
All right, all right. We have uh, on page 89. I'm up in. I'm still up. I'm back up in the number 17 there. The economic development. We have grant updates. Uh, basically, uh, we uh, we we passed a resolution, and it's in your packet on page 92. We passed a resolution back on the uh, 17th day of April for House Bill One to. Uh, to go after uh, new voting machines for the board of elections. And Lee Santa uh, has been working on this and with Lynn assisting her about get, getting this information and so forth. And anyway, uh, we, have an, we have an assurance that uh, we can go ahead and uh, apply for this grant. Uh, I guess we, we can try and think how to word it. Lynn, can you help word this? Since this affects your office, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. House Bill One, uh, where we're getting voting machines of 130,000. I know you and Lee Santa have been working on this. What What do you want worded? Well, uh, that's on the wrong. Just the court approval with which to submit the grant application. Yes. Yeah. We, before we, the required documentation. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to come up with right there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we we can we can apply and submit this grant and get approval before we actually buy the machines. That's what I was trying to get, get right. out. That's probably what I was trying to get out. Thank you. Thanks, Will, for that. But uh, so anyway, uh, we have this in front of us now. If y'all would like to uh, make a motion that we apply for this grant to see if we can get approval to get the uh, Board of Elections and new voting machines. I make a motion to apply for grant for House Bill 1. Thank you. Have a motion by Will, seconded by Zach. Right to uh, proceed with this, uh, to apply for this grant to get the new voting machines for the Board of Elections. So the county, it's not for the Board of Elections. It's for the county voters. Yes, for the county voters and the Board of Elections that administer the elections. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Lynn, if you can, please work with Lisa Anna and we'll get so we can get all this together and get what you need and we'll get make sure we can get reimbursed and we'll have machines that'll spit out the paper. You know, like you guys want to see this now, that'll be better. So all right. Thank you for that. So we moved past 17 and 18. Uh, 18. The, the next thing that we have in the book is uh, the CACO uh, insurance grant program. Uh, it's on page 93 uh, and page 94. Uh, we can, basically what this is, we can apply for this grant through CACO and it'll help with uh, purchasing equipment, training, and consulting. Doug and I spoke, spoke about this earlier today. And uh, if, if you all move to apply for this grant, at least that will help us. But I want the uh, safety committee, which is Dan, Mike, Randy, Chris, and Todd, Maybe you all give us some recommendations on uh, what type of safety equipment would be best on this grant. Uh, and the reason we kind of need to do it is the window opened on August 15th and it closes on September 15th. Motion to approve applying for the grant. Second. All right, we have a motion by Jim, seconded by Mike, uh, to apply for the uh, CACO insurance grant that is currently open to get uh, equipment, training, and consulting for safety. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Got that taken care of. Uh, graphics. Bill, up to do what? Which what? What you say, Zach? Website. Did set graphics. Yeah, building grounds. We don't have anything. All right, set graphics. How do you know? You didn't ask me. I heard that we already done, we already talked about that. I'm sorry. Will do you have anything on building and grounds? Uh, Kenko, uh, Ben. Uh, our check for an insurance claim will be in the mail tomorrow. Good. That's about thirty thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. You raise it twenty five hundred because uh, the home mounts are. Is that for the roof? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We got it's another twenty five hundred bucks. We do. Yeah, it's on the Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Will. I'm Thank sorry you. I didn't follow me on time because I'm going to wait for the dollar. There you go. Have to open up another mountain. 
So, but anyway, uh, all right, we'll move on into uh, old business on the, uh, the graphics. Uh, on page 126, well, this book's going to go pretty quick nowadays. Page 126, this is what uh, Brittany recommends that we get. Uh, my understanding is currently Ms. Schaefer charges us about 80 a month, and this will cost us about 100 a month. So it's pretty close to par as the actual cost of what it once was. And the two of them uh, said this is this is what we need to do. So Brittany and Lisa. Let, uh, yeah, thank you, Zach. I forgot. Brittany and Lisa Anna have been in conversation with uh, Ms. Schaefer. Thank you. So, motion to approve the revised second track. All right, option two. I guess it's on what's on page one twenty six. Yep. Yeah, the 6,000. Yeah. Yep. What you said. All right, we have a motion by Jim, second by Mike, uh, to approve the revised design option two for our uh, website uh, design for the county. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Next is courthouse roof. Uh, they start on page 135. There's a, there's a bid on 135, there's a bid on 136, and there's a bid on 153. And there's a pretty good range. Uh, 153 is the least expensive bid. And I'm trusting that all this is apples to apples. Uh, it ain't, can you point out, because uh, I, I really don't know. Well, I was looking at them and like uh, Christian Brothers got tear off one layer. Uh, I think he was on the roof. There's three layers of ice L. They're pricing one. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be a change order and cost you another 20 grand. It's my thoughts. I don't know that, but they don't price it. Uh, Christian Brothers has like, a, I'm just. Out costs that are we know that, that ramp roofing, it says that any additional roofing layers needing to be removed will begin at $40 per square. So they're, if they say one, that's what they're saying. Yeah, and it's three, so that's going to jump you if you do the math. I did some of it earlier and didn't write it yeah. down. Uh, there's a lot of change. Tristan Brothers has that tapered insulation. I know it says <laughs> if needed, so I don't know what that turns into, but it's about $200 a square. Uh, they don't have a credential there. They get a 50-year warranty on flat roof. I see 20-year on material on Christian Brothers, but I don't see anything about flat roof. Which one would you go with? Well, I'm all for saving my buck. This credential is, uh, you know, the guys I brought out here, uh, you know, they put a lot of time into this. Like Christian Brothers and this other company, I feel like it's just, where it's at, you know, they don't have any, they're going to actually put up a full blind fence around the courthouse. So if anything falls off and don't hit somebody. I assume these other companies just going to put up caution tape. Um, you talking about the Citadel? Yes, sir. I think they're going to on the line. Uh, I feel like by the time you get done with what I see, they're going to be the same price. And Christian Brothers come out, and insurance wasn't going to give us nothing. Citadel come out, and we got to check for 30500 I make a motion that we go with Citadel Roofing for the amount of one dollars and three cents. I second that. Right. Actually, it's one fifteen oh one four because we don't pay sales tax. Oh uh, yeah, one fifteen oh four. Yeah, one fifteen fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have, uh, and, and I want to make sure, Corey, that uh, see the reason, the reason we didn't do it last time. We, uh, I know we all. Trust me, y'all are still all aware. But we did rebid it, and then we did get three bids. So now we are able to do the AOC uh, if they'll pay for it. And uh, I'm going to discuss uh, AOC a little bit a little later, uh, also with the courthouse. So anyway, but we have a motion on the floor by Zach, seconded by Will, uh, to approve the Citadel uh, contract at the amount of 115.01469. Any other discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. 
And uh, I'd like to say that just to keep in mind that once this work takes place, we're most likely going to be seeing some other stuff come up when we start turning it off. So just sure there'll be some wood in here for this. Well, that, that roof, that ceiling, the whole top of that jury room up there is it's in bad shape. Yeah, they're wood really too. These other places are ninety dollars a sheet. They're seventy five. When you tear a roof off, you're gonna put wood on it. Yeah. Uh, almost any time I get a roof put on, it ends up costing more money. So, all right, we've got that covered. Uh, next is me. No. Yep. <laughs> yep. You. Now passed out everything. And go good. So we got the two bids originally again. We got the one from Boots and one hand, and we got the revised stuff from Azure. Um, basically, the 34 359 you see there, that is what's going to cost with uh, out the spread, the hopper box. Uh, and this is also what's going to cost the most about a free, free wet system. But it's going to be the it's going to be the plow, uh, the dump bed, and the hydraulic system. Um, for thirty-four thousand three hundred fifty nine dollars. So um, one vehicle. Yes, yeah, one truck. One truck. One truck. Yeah. And then on the other side, the, the one that says it's got my name on it or whatever. Um, this the six thousand three hundred eighty nine dollars. That's what the cost of the tailgate spare is. Very dangerous. So, so if we bought them, that'd be added to the thirty four thousand three hundred, right? Yes. Yeah. Be in addition, which would be a total cost of forty thousand seven something seven forty eight. And that's with the everything from the same before, except without the hopper. Yep. Y'all remember what the price was with Hopper? 47, almost 48,000. It's the same as almost 16,000 for each truck. For a reason why? Well, wouldn't it only be 7,000? We don't know. We can't. Nobody Other than they're just high? Which, yeah, that's all we know. Okay. Well, ba basically, Dukes, y'all, I, I, I've got it. Hopefully, y'all have it. The 65,000 included the salt box. Or, yeah. I have a spreader box, correct? And then if, if you look on the back, item, item 17 on this Duke's page, right, 10148 is what that box costs. So there are 55,000. If you take that box off, yeah, there's still 41,000. Still 55,000, correct. Yeah, they were still higher even without all that. Right. So, you know. so well, this like going to point over right? Yeah, I think the only discussion to be made is do, are we buying a tailgate spreader or not? All right, the way we bid it out, uh, the way I feel, and Corey and I, and Corey can correct me, we had a conversation earlier, is that the way we bid it out is we bid out for sure a snow plow, a dump box with a hydraulic system. And we spread it, and we, and we, we bid out, this is what I'm trying to explain, we bid out for a soft spreader. Now, then the specification for that soft spreader was not conveyed directly. So we are still buying a soft spreader. Which is the salt photo that we voted to bid out. So I don't think it's an issue with anything. We're still in the terms of what we want. Yeah. And we're getting the structure? Yeah. What we need to do is we need to vote on the plow, the hydraulics, and a bed. Right. And it sounds like Edinger is the place to buy it. Then. Yeah, does that change the price? Because they're probably figuring on. They're already figuring out the running the hydraulics yeah. for this. Yeah. Well, that that'll be something we can do out of the scope of bidding because it's under forty thousand. So we, we gotta stay within the scope of bidding on the equipment we bid out. Yeah, but how many are we gonna buy? Three? If we well, buy that's a, well, it's a, I, I'm only gonna recommend we buy one to see how it works. I say I've only buy two. I know how they're gonna work. I've done more than you. All right, well, either way, we can't vote on it, so I'm going to make a motion to use Edinger's to buy X, Y, and Z. Are yeah. we going to call that, uh, I don't have the prices in here. But what I'm going to do, after we vote on, on taking out our trucks, then then we'll discuss buying the, the soft sprayers. So, so our price is going to be $34,359, correct? Per truck. Per truck. But it could be less than that because there's some labor figuring out with us, right? So I'm here. No, that, that's what. That's going to be everything we set up. Okay, all right, sorry. I'll make a motion 
with our Ettingers at $34,359 a piece. Second. All right, we'll we'll open the trucks and Lord, and we want to use our hood for. See you guys. See y'all. Good night. Good night. Uh, it's up, up to you all. I mean, we we bid it. How much, how much money do we have left to spend with our? I'm not sure, but we don't have the road equipment in there for the, the, the season. So. <laughs> we don't what? We don't have money in the budget for the road, road equipment either. So it's like so twenty thousand dollars. We have to transfer it to one. If we, I, well, we got the money in ARPA to pay for it. Let's go ahead and use it. That's yeah, what I think we're trying to do, isn't it? Use up all the ARPA money we can. We we discussed that, didn't we? Uh, we yeah. needed to go ARPA because we didn't have equipment in line. I think so. And then we talked about doing the salt spreader. We we, we can do the road we, equipment. Well, at twelve thousand, they'd be a little short. I don't think we couldn't use our money for that also. But why didn't we not have this in the line when we knew we was buying? Because we, we didn't buy it. Well, we I thought we had to tell you all the budget either, but like, it's last year. It's a whole lot. Whole, just, I don't know. I'm not blaming on this. I was asking if I could ever read. That was accusatory. Good, good, good points. Good points. Uh, well, that problem, of course. Uh, the question is, what's the What's the eligible use under our that we're using that for? I mean, any, any county. Yeah, we can use it for any county expenditure. Since we're under 10 million, I mean, we're paying for the jail, we're paying the, the wages, all, all that's allowed. We bought the trucks with ARPA money. That was, we did check the, yeah, the blessing with the yeah. administrator. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. we bought the skid loader with ARPA. Oh, that's so we'll have. Technically, because the lost revenue or anything of what we received, we could just spend the whole thing on basically entering any expense that's county related. Technically. <laughs> Can I add my motion to stay with ARPA funds? Yes. Somebody has second it. Second. So, uh, you, you just need to uh, check the. Uh, Change your motion, with, or you want to do an amendment to the motion? I just want to change it. That we use open funds. All right. So you want to withdraw your original motion? Yeah, I withdraw my original motion. Somebody want to withdraw their second? Well, that well, was it. All right. So now, now the floor is open for discussion on equipment. Somebody would like to make a motion to do the Edinger at the 34359 times two, and to pay for it with ARPA money. I make a motion that we. They enter $34,359 per truck and use our money. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Motion by Mike, second by Zach to buy the two truck beds from Eddinger at a cost of $34,359 each. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Now we can discuss the tailgate spreaders if you like. What was that? We need to get a roll on this one. Didn't they already say like January? And that's what I'm saying. That's what I think we want to talk about. Them. Mm -hmm. You know, moving all down the road. Yeah. Well, and I don't mean, well, I mean, 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 I